So welcome back to another video of KJet stuff because we love doing KJet. Now, air plates. We know it rises and relevant to how high that rises, relevant to how high the fuel pin goes and delivers X amount of fuel. But how high does the air plate physically go? I mean, I know the technical specifications where I test the plate like a simulated idle and a simulated max flow, flow. but how true is that into relation to how the car works. Now, I've, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm quite happy to cut things in half, have a look inside, you know, because I want to learn. I want to learn myself and I'm sharing this so you can learn. Now, I scoured the internet and I could never find a video of actually seeing what this does physically in real life. So, I've got an old air boot. <clears throat> I've drilled some holes for it. We've got a camera I can plug into the phone um, and we can film what it's actually doing. Now, the main point of this is firstly to see what the air plate's doing and secondly to confirm that this is a stock 16 valve and mine has obviously got the Porsche um, air meter on it with the adjusted 16 valve unit. So my 16 valve unit is flowing 180 cc a minute of fuel at maximum plate lift. Obviously these do about 140 full plate lift, give or take a bit. But mine's at 180, that's 40 cc more fuel, that's a hell of a lot of fuel. But is all that fuel going in the engine? Well, it must be doing what it's doing because we know from the AFR gauge we're, and the rolling road we're doing sort of 12 and a half up to sort of tickling 13s from three and a half grand right up to, you know, we're hitting the limit. So the fueling's doing what it's doing, we know that because we're making the power, but how much that fuel is getting in? So it's already on the car. We're going to get out, warm the car up, and take a drive on the film obviously a separate camera on the rev counter and the camera inside there and see what it does over mainly flat out because that's what we've done so you know a few runs seeing where it sits at idle seeing where it sits sort of just cruising along you know third maybe fourth gear 34 mile hour, nothing drastic um, but mainly we want to look at wide open throttle so let's get in the car and see what it's doing
so we're back with the car now you can see we're all lighting up in there now I've taken this out this is one of the holes I did originally cut on it to try and get the camera position the camera position was better sat down now see there's the camera in there poking through and that's our air meter and um, yeah so we've just popped this out and then we're going to mimic how high this is relevant to the pictures now what I'm going to do is drop a screwdriver and get a flathead in there right that there that is the plate physically maxed out and the measurement I've got from the picture of the camera or watching the video and mimicking how this is that air plate is about two no more than two mil from actually physically topping out so that shows that our Porsche air meter and all our pressures as in the control pressure pushing that plate down are doing what we expected them to do so the air plate is as physically as high as it's pretty much going to go um, I don't know if it is topping out but from like say from looking at the video and where I'm raising that to and it's feeling it's physically topped out you, yeah I say no more than two mil from being topped out which in turn that relates to that plate being physically maxed out on the metering head flowing 180 cc's of fuel a minute per injector so that shows that the air meter is actually sending that fuel in there that sounds like a lot of fuel but remember my afrs were 12 and a half to 13s right to red line which is where you sort of want it so it's a lot of um we were wondering what the air plate was going to do how high it was going to come up and whether the theory behind the porsche unit Porsche is also the same as a Ford unit, a Volvo unit, a Saab unit, and many other units. How high that plate was going. Now the main benefit, again, is the air you plate there goes above that body. Now, that clearly goes above the body. I'll, what I'll do, I'll get another one, exactly the same as these two, on a bench, and I'll show you the difference between a stock 60 valve and a Porsche one. So, here we are with two units. Now this is exactly the same unit as what's on my car currently. This is going on a friend's car. Same air meter, same modifications to the CO hole to stop it bottoming out the topping out and there's another modification we've done there. Again this is a metering head again um, that was originally balanced, the same as mine, 180 cc's a minute versus a stock 60 valve metering head. Now they're both exactly the same metering heads, ignore the flow. Obviously you can make that flow as much as that and vice versa. But this is the main bit as you can see already. So this is the air plates as high as they can go. As you can see straight away we've got a larger diameter inside there. Now if we go down you can see, I can get that body a bit higher. You see the air plates are at the same sort of height angle. Well, it's not. I pushed that up and it's moved. Anyway, so you can see, you can see how much difference gap we've got between here and between here, the airflow. And if you try and look bottom down, it almost looks like there's a bigger plate on there, but it's not. That's just how they sit. And now we're imagining the, how the air comes in the engine the air comes up through here and that way so it comes up there and you've got a smaller gap for the air to go through and you've got a big step to go over versus this one you've got a much larger gap and it's got less of a step so the air has got more free movement of travel to come straight in than it has to go oh like that beautiful so i've been wanting to do that because it's all we know what air plates do but how high do they go in the car and the theory behind this and how we've done it to set the fuel up has worked on mine because we've got the AFRs we're doing what it should do but in practice does the airplane actually go high enough to inject that fuel the answer is yes so that's bottomed out topped out even and my airplane's probably you know you're looking one or two mil below that so you've got all that gap of air around there coming out versus I mean look 
you get the finger quite tight around there and I can't even fit my finger any further around there that that's tight you get this one you know, all the way around there so it's definitely proven to work and it's nice to actually see what the air plate's doing so how cool was that we can actually see physically what the air plate's doing and to be honest to me and the other guy I chat with the time we were sort of like full throttle is it going to be sort of midway where's it going to be i wasn't expecting it to pretty much nearly top out that's cool which also reiterates the point of our theoretical modification with the air plate being higher the different body on it the better flow um, and the more fuel so you know um theory is always one thing but practical is always nice to prove it. and it's really cool to see what the air plate does i mean most of the time it is very low because the throttle's not fully open, it doesn't need a lot of full membrane of the throttle body. You've got a little um, butterfly and a big one. Most of the time the little one's the only one that opens, so it doesn't suck a lot of air in until you open the taps and then that big one opens, boom, all the air goes in and that plate goes right up. So I'm well happy with that, that's cool. I mean, like I say, I scoured the internet trying to find videos of, you know, what the air plate's doing. Couldn't find one, so let's do it. So there you go, that is how the air plate works and what it actually does. Um, and now we'll look forward to the rolling road we've got rolling road they booked in about three weeks less than three weeks when mine's on the rolling road that other one's on the rolling road to see what power we are at now um, I was 183 and 156 torque last time since then I've changed the HT leads for Mr Retro leads also we changed the injectors over the proper ones um, what else have we done and we've obviously remade the downpipe and the car is flying, no no joke about that, absolutely flying along, such fun. So those three things combined together, mainly exhaust, we're gaining the scavenging, should have a nice flow, see how that um, tails out. I'll get it out with an AFR gauge before we go on the rollers just to see what it's doing, because obviously the exhaust, if that's improved the scavenging, that could have affected the AFR, so it might need a further tweak, but we'll jabber on that in the next video. So again, cheers for watching. If you can, click subscribe. You know, <coughs> we're nearly at 6,000 subscribers from something I've started in the garage, uh, restoring that and then, you know, doing all this cool K-Jet stuff. I mean, V8, four-cylinder, another four-cylinder. It's crazy. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's what I need. Now if you want to get the best of me.